Welcome to J&J's Military Report. Join James and Jane as we analyze the latest in military strategy, global defense, and advanced weaponry. From fighter jets to power shifts, we break down the stories shaping the future of warfare. Today we're doing a deep dive into an aircraft that, while it's often misunderstood, isn't it, but it's fundamentally redefining air combat. We're talking about the F-35 Lightning II. And this isn't just about, you know, faster planes or bigger bombs, not at all. We're talking about a real paradigm shift mm -hmm. where information, information itself becomes the ultimate weapon. It's a fascinating idea and it leads to some pretty incredible questions, things you might be wondering. Like, how does one aircraft give its pilot the power to literally uh, see through the floor of their own jet? What makes it this quarterback of the skies that actually boosts every other military asset, ground units, ships, everything? And why are those common criticisms you hear about its dogfighting ability? Maybe completely missing the point. We're going to unpack all of that. We'll look at how the F-35 isn't just about winning fights, but really commanding the entire battle space. So let's start there. For decades, air superiority, it was all about the raw numbers, mm -hmm. right? Speed, altitude, turn rate. Yeah classic dogfights. But the reality of air combat, while it's fundamentally changed. It really has. You look at the 21st century and the threats are just incredibly complex now. Sophisticated integrated air defense systems, IADS, uh, very capable peer competitors. These challenges, they demanded a totally new approach. Modern air combat doctrine, it's now focused on controlling the information within the battle space, not just the physical airspace anymore. Right, controlling the information. And that core idea is information dominance. How would you uh, define that in practical terms? Well, information dominance basically means achieving superiority in how you generate, manipulate, and then use information to get that military advantage. The goal, essentially, is to make the enemy deaf, dumb, and blind, as they say, while you maintain complete awareness yourself. It's about outthinking them. And the F-35, it sounds like it was built for this from day one. Exactly. Designed from its very inception to embody this information-centric doctrine. It's not just a slightly better fighter. It's really the most advanced node in a 21st century security network centric architecture that's the key phrase so comparing it just on speed or turning ability it's a category error like judging a smartphone by i don't know how well it hammers a nail you're completely missing its true purpose okay so how does the f-35 actually achieve this this incredible battle space awareness you mentioned integrated pillars yes its core advantage rests on three deeply integrated pillars. The first one is very low observability, VLOHO. Most people just call it stealth. Stealth, right. Yeah. But it's more than just a special paint job. Oh, much more. It's a holistic approach. Multispectral, all aspect design. It means the precise shaping of the airframe itself, carrying weapons internally, embedding sensors so they don't stick out. Plus, advanced radar absorbent materials, reducing heat signatures, even muffling the sound. It's a whole system engineered for near invisibility across different sensor types. And the effect of that comprehensive stealth, what does that do tactically? It creates a profound asymmetry, an imbalance in time and information. It directly attacks the adversary's ODA loop, their observe, orient, decide, act cycle. By drastically shrinking the range at which they can detect the F-35, the pilot gets to observe, orient, and decide long before the enemy even suspects they're there. This leads directly to that tactical ideal. First look, first shot, first kill. So stealth isn't just defensive, it's a primary offensive tool for gaining information dominance. Okay, so VLO helps it hide. But then it needs to see everything. The unblinking eye, as you call it. Exactly. Pillar number two, it's unprecedented sensor ecosystem. Let's start with the radar, the ANAPG-81 ASA. This is widely considered the most capable ACAS radar out there. It's a multitasking beast. It can do air-to-air -air tracking, air-to-ground mapping with high-resolution synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, and powerful electronic warfare functions all at the same time. Wow. Any specific numbers on that? Yeah, some pretty impressive stats. It can track something like 23 targets in just nine seconds, engage 19 of those in under three seconds. Its detection range against small targets is huge, maybe 150 kilometers for a one square meter target. And crucially, its electronic warfare ability means a single F-35 can often suppress advanced enemy air defenses by itself. Jamming and electronic attack capabilities are built in. Okay, radar is impressive. But then you mentioned the distributed aperture system, the DAS, that sounds really different. It absolutely is. Unique to the F-35, the NIQ-37 DAS 
uses six high-res infrared sensors. They're placed all around the airframe, and they provide the seamless, completely unobstructed 360-degree spherical view. It's always on, passively detecting things like missile launches, tracking aircraft approaching from any angle, even from behind or below. So no blind spots. No blind spots. And the really revolutionary part is how it projects this stitched-together day and night imagery directly onto the pilot's helmet display. This is what allows the pilot to literally see through the aircraft floor, the wings, the fuselage. It's like the plane isn't even there. Incredible. And you mentioned it detects missile launches. Yes, even ballistic missile launches from hundreds of miles away. Its sensitivity is extraordinary. And there's one more sensor. The EOTs. Right, the Electro-Optical Targeting System. EOTs is the world's first internally mounted system that combines FLIR, that's forward-looking infrared, and RST, infrared search and track. So it gives you all the capabilities of an advanced targeting pod, high-res imagery, target tracking, laser designation for bombs, but without an external pod that would compromise stealth, you get precision targeting from much safer distances. Okay, so these individual sensors are clearly state-of-the-art. But you said the real game changer is how they work together, the power of sensor fusion. That's absolutely the core of it. The third pillar, and perhaps the most important, the F-35 doesn't just present raw data from each sensor. It automatically gathers, processes, and fuses everything. Data from the radar, the 360DS, the EOTs, its electronic warfare systems, even offboard data from other platforms, it all gets integrated into a single, coherent, intuitive picture of the entire battle space. And this unified picture is projected right onto the pilot's helmet visor. It creates this uh, unprecedented, almost God's eye view of everything happening around them. So it's not just data overload, it's presenting actual knowledge. Exactly. That's the concept of cognitive dominance. It massively reduces the pilot's workload. They aren't mentally juggling different sensor feeds. The F-35's processors automatically identify threats, classify them, track them, prioritize them, and present that actionable knowledge clearly. Pilots consistently describe this as an asymmetric advantage, unlike anything they've ever experienced. This level of software integration, it's immensely complex. It represents a multi-generational lead over potential adversaries. That makes sense. So beyond its own power, we hear the F-35 called a force multiplier, the quarterback of the skies. How does it boost other assets in the network? This is where the F-35 transitions from just a fighter to a truly strategic weapon. It was designed from the ground up to be a central node in a vast, interconnected network. It uses its stealth to get into places others can't, deep inside contested environments. It uses those amazing sensors to gather critical intelligence. And then, this is key, it securely shares that comprehensive picture with friendly forces. Air, land, sea assets, all connected via secure data links. This is fundamental to joint all domain operations, or JIG, connecting everything. Can you walk us through a scenario? How might that work? Sure. Imagine an F-35 penetrating deep into enemy airspace. Its fused sensors detect a high-value mobile target, maybe a SAM launcher that's hard to find. The F-35 pilot doesn't necessarily have to risk engaging it directly. Instead, using its data links, it instantly transmits precise targeting data coordinates, track information to a shooter platform that's hanging back at a safer distance. And the shooter could be anything pretty much anything networked in. It could be a fourth gen fighter, like an F-16 acting as a missile truck, a Navy destroyer launching a Tomahawk cruise missile, or even army artillery receiving targeting data. So it completely changes the risk. It inverts the risk calculus, as the term goes. Precisely. In the past, every aircraft in a strike package, even vulnerable tankers or jammers, faced huge risks going deep. Now, only the stealthy F-35s need to operate in the highest threat zones. They become the forward eyes, ears, and really the brain for the entire operation. Legacy aircraft, the older ones, can stay further back, safer, just launching weapons based on the F-35's targeting data. That increases survivability across the board. Dramatically. It boosts the effectiveness of the entire joint force. And it gives older legacy platforms a whole new lease on life, making them relevant in high-end conflicts. Okay, this sounds incredibly capable. But what about the competition? Russia has the Su-57, China has the J-20. How do they genuinely stack up against these F-35 advantages? That's the critical comparison. And while both the Su-57 and J-20 are definitely fifth-generation efforts and significant achievements, a closer look reveals some... Uh, pretty major gaps compared to the F-35, especially in the areas we've discussed. Let's start with Russia's Su-57 Felon. What's its focus? Its primary design philosophy seems rooted in traditional air superiority. Super maneuverability is key, using 3D thrust vectoring for extreme agility at high angles of attack. 
Very impressive kinematic performance. But we talked about stealth earlier. That agility must impact its VLO characteristics. Hugely. It leads to very significant compromises in stealth. You can see exposed engine fan blades from the front, the engine nozzles around, which increases radar return, and the overall shaping prioritizes aerodynamics over low observability. The result is a radar cross-section, an RCS, that's estimated to be orders of magnitude maybe up a 1,000 to 10,000 times larger than the F-35s. What does that mean in detection range? Well... Ballpark figures suggest a radar that might detect an F-35 at, say, 27 kilometers, could potentially see ENSO-57 over 150 kilometers away. It's a massive difference in who sees who first. On top of that, the Su-57 program has serious production problems. The fleet size is tiny, maybe a few dozen at most, and you often see them flying with weapons on external pylons, which completely negates any stealth benefits the airframe might have. Okay, what about China's J-20 Mighty Dragon? It looks quite different. Different role. Yes, a different philosophy. The J-20 isn't primarily a dogfighter. Its doctrine seems focused on being a long-range interceptor and strike aircraft. It fits into China's A-280 strategy, anti-accessory denial in the Pacific. So it has a large internal fuel capacity for range, good stealth characteristics, especially from the front, and it carries China's advanced long-range PL-15 air-to-air missile internally. And they've built quite a few. They have. Production has ramped up significantly. They likely have over 300 J-20s now, giving them a numerical advantage in their region. That's a strength. Well, what are its potential weaknesses compared to the F-35? Well, while its frontal stealth is considered good, its signature is likely much larger from the sides, rear, or below. Engine technology has also been a persistent challenge. They're still relying on interim engines, not the intended high-performance WS-15. And critically, while it has advanced sensors, perhaps analogous to the F-35's DES, the consensus is that its sensor fusion and networking capabilities are significantly less mature, less integrated, and less automated than the F-35 system. There might also be limitations in build quality and internal air-to-ground ordnance capacity. So, summing that up, where does the F-35 maintain its decisive edge over these competitors? It really comes down to three systemic, deeply ingrained advantages. First is stealth maturity. The U.S. has been operational with stealth for over 40 years, F-117, B-2, F-22. The F-35 benefits from all that accumulated knowledge and refinement. Russia and China are basically on their first generation operational stealth designs. The data suggests their stealth is just less comprehensive and less effective overall. Second advantage. Sensor fusion. This is, I think, the F-35's defining technological leap. While rivals have advanced individual sensors, there's just no credible public evidence they've achieved that seamless, automated, pilot-centric fusion that gives the F-35 pilot true cognitive dominance. That level of software integration, it's an incredibly complex challenge that takes decades, literally, to master. And the third advantage isn't just about the plane itself. Exactly. It's the network and the ecosystem. The F-35 isn't just an aircraft, it's the heart of a massive global enterprise. Over a thousand jets delivered, operated by more than 17 allied nations. This creates unparalleled advantages in shared logistics, global maintenance and sustainment infrastructure, pilot training programs, and coalition interoperability. The ability for allies to fight seamlessly together is huge. The Su-57 and J-20 are essentially single nation platforms. Their fleets are smaller, their logistics are opaque, likely more brittle. The F-35's global support network is, in itself, a strategic weapon. All right, let's tackle some of those common criticisms we hear about the F-35. People often bring up perceived dogfighting weaknesses and, of course, the enormous cost. How should we frame those? Yeah, these are fair questions and they need a nuanced look. Let's start with the dogfight debate. A lot of that criticism traces back to a leaked report from 2015. An early test pilot said an F-35A development model was outmaneuvered by an F-16 in specific test setups. That report got a lot of traction and led many to label the F-35 as sluggish in a close-in fight, a WVR, or within visual range engagement. But you've argued the F-35 tries to avoid that scenario entirely. Precisely. Its whole combat philosophy is built around not getting into a WVR turning fight. Its stealth and sensor advantage are meant to ensure it detects, tracks, and destroys adversaries from beyond visual range, BVR, long before the merge even happens. And we see this proven out in major exercises. Red flag, for instance. F-35s consistently achieve kill ratios of 20 to 1 or even higher against capable 4th gen opponents. The fight is won before the visual engagement starts. Okay, but what if it does end up in a close fight? Is the maneuverability criticism still valid? Well, two points there. First, that 2015 test used a very early jet with immature flight control software. 
Operational pilots flying the mature F-35 today report very different experiences. They actually describe its handling characteristics favorably, often saying it combines the high angle of attack capability of something like an F-A-18, meaning it can point its nose effectively with the energy retention and acceleration of an F-16. Second, and maybe more importantly, the concept of agility itself is changing. With the helmet-mounted display and the DAS system we talked about, an F-35 pilot can target an enemy aircraft simply by looking at it. Ah, so they don't need to point the whole plane. Exactly. They can employ high off boresight missiles like the AM-9X Sidewinder just by looking, without having to wrench the aircraft to the perfect firing position. So while kinematic performance matters, pilots consistently say they'd choose the F-35 for combat because its situational awareness, knowing where everything is, is the ultimate factor in winning, not just raw turning ability. Okay, that addresses the dogfight question. Now the big one, the trillion dollar question. Cost, readiness, sustainment. It is the most expensive weapon system ever, right? Projected life cycle, cost over $1.7 trillion. It is, and that number is staggering. There's no denying the program faced significant cost overruns, schedule delays, and real challenges with sustainment, especially early on with spare parts and the complex ALIS logistics system. So how do we put that enormous cost into context? Well, a few things. First, the F-35 isn't just one plane. It's a family of three very different variants, A, B, and C, designed to replace a whole slew of older legacy aircraft across the Air Force, Navy, Marines, and numerous allied air forces. So part of the cost reflects replacing maybe half a dozen different aircraft types with one core design, which should create long-term economies of scale and training, maintenance, and upgrades. Also, the concurrency strategy building jets while development was still ongoing was controversial and led to expensive retrofits, but the argument was it delivered a critical fifth-gen capability much faster than a traditional sequential approach. And has there been progress on cost and readiness since those early struggles? Definitely. Significant progress. The unit cost for the F-35A, the most common variant, has come down steadily. It's now below $80 million per jet. Which is competitive with. It's actually competitive with, or even cheaper than, buying brand new advanced fourth generation fighters like the Eurofighter Typhoon or the Rafale. And on readiness, while challenges remain, mission-capable rates for deployed F-35 units are now consistently reported above 90%, which is very high. Sustainment issues are being tackled aggressively, bringing more depot repair work in-house, replacing the old ALI system with a modern cloud-based system called ODIN. It's interesting. You mentioned the public scrutiny. Does that openness actually become an advantage? Paradoxically, I think it does. The F-35 program's problems have been intensely scrutinized, debated in Congress, audited by the GA reported in the press, that kind of transparency, which you really only get in open democratic systems, forces accountability. It drives continuous improvement and adaptation. It makes the program more resilient. This constant pressure is forging a very mature, adaptable, and ultimately effective global sustainment system. Compare that to the challenges faced by the Su-57 or J-20 programs, which are largely hidden from view. Given their likely economic and technical hurdles, they probably face similar or worse problems, but without that same institutional pressure cooker forcing effective solutions. That hidden brittleness could be a major strategic disadvantage for them. So pulling it all together then, the F-35's real dominance isn't about just being a bit faster or turning a little tighter than the next jet. No, not at all. It's about a fundamental, multi-layered superiority in what really matters in modern warfare, information. It's that synergistic combination, the trinity you could call it, of mature, all-aspect stealth. That revolutionary, fused sensor ecosystem delivering cognitive dominance to the pilot, and its central role as the command and control hub of a networked, joint, all-domain force. Adversaries like Russia and China, they've built capable aircraft for sure, but their design philosophies, you could argue, still seem anchored in fourth-generation ideas. They essentially tried to build a better fighter based on old metrics. The U.S. and its allies with the F-35 program, they invested in building a fundamentally better way to fight. And that difference in approach in philosophy seems to be what solidifies the F-35's position. I believe so. It positions it as the world's most dominant combat aircraft for the foreseeable future. It aims to make potential challengers obsolete, not by outturning them, but by outthinking them, outsensing them, and outnetworking them on a scale they likely cannot match. It really makes you think. And maybe a final thought for you, our listeners, to consider. How does this fundamental shift from physical dominance to information dominance change the very nature of conflict itself? What does it mean for military strategy when the ultimate weapon isn't necessarily a missile, but actionable knowledge? 
And how might that reshape warfare across all domains, air, sea, land, space, cyber, in the years to come? Something to ponder. You've been listening to J&J's Military Report, where we analyze the latest in military strategy, global defense, and advanced weaponry. We'll catch you next time.